Hello everyone, it's Kyle here with a new Assassin's Creed video. And although Ubisoft has still not released a main title with a solo female protagonist, the series has had some amazing female characters over the years. And with the recent Assassin's Creed Sisterhood campaign, it has got me thinking, who are my favourite female characters in the series? So here is my top five. At number 5 is none other than Sophia Sartor, the intelligent and witty Venetian who went on to marry the great Ezio Auditore. After first meeting her, Ezio could tell that she was a special woman, and their relationship flourished throughout Revelations. But she wasn't just a love interest, she held a key role in the story of the game, as her bookshop held a secret passageway that led to one of the Masyaf keys, and also a map with coded locations of rare books which gave clues to other keys. Those books fascinated Sophia, so she helped Ezio decipher the map for him and he really couldn't have done it without her. Now Ezio didn't tell her that he was an assassin until he saved her from the Byzantine Templars. After travelling with Ezio to Masyaf Castle he explained everything, and I really liked how she quickly understood why Ezio was the way he was, and she was so intrigued by the assassin's order its tenants and way of life. She always seemed like someone who wanted to learn and unlock the mysteries of the world. I really did like her a lot for that reason alone. She was also a woman who Ezio spent the rest of his life with. So she was an incredibly important character in the series and one I certainly won't forget. What is this? A gift, Sit. Che belli, grazie. I wanted to thank you for letting me play a small role in your adventure. A small role is enough for this adventure, believe me. <laughs> you are a mystery, Ezio Auditore. Mi dispiace. I do not mean to be. It is fine. È affascinante. Sembra squisito. Why, thank you. Any luck with the final code? Ah, the code, see. Si. I solved it many hours ago. You will get it soon enough. Okay, so the next woman on my list at number four is Rebecca Crane. The cool, techy modern day character who even built an Animus herself, the Animus 2.0. Even with the Templars on their towels and the world at stake, she always sounded upbeat and hopeful. She was a hugely important part of the team and Desmond appreciated everything she'd done for him, as she helped train Desmond with the Animus and even pulled him out of a coma. She really is one of the young sung heroes of the series. I mean, Rebecca's back and forth with both Desmond and Sean was hilarious especially with Sean. It's a bit of a cliche, but they were like brother and sister, taking a mick out of each other in, let's be honest, some very stressful situations. So yes, I really do miss Rebecca and those light-hearted moments in Assassin's Creed games, but I'm grateful they even happened. Rebecca really does deserve some love. You ever use the Animus? Your ancestors have such interesting lives. I went in once. It was pretty lame. Yeah, what were you? Some kind of spinster, probably. Worse, a Prussian mercenary. I spent hours firing guns. Boring! Yeah, guns are for sissies. On to number three now, and it is Mary Reed, the adventurous pirate assassin posing as James Kidd. Her life as a pirate was a bit of a ruse as well but it helped her pursue her targets as an assassin. She strongly believed in freedom and liberty and those beliefs shone through in Black Flag. From early on in the game you could tell she had a bit of a soft spot for Edward and introduced him to the assassins in Tulum after learning that he had the sense. The assassins didn't welcome Edward though because he blindly aided the Templars earlier on in the game, but Mary was still hopeful that he could change his path and do what is right. And I absolutely love that about Mary, she made Edward a better man, and that seemed near impossible at the start of Black Flag. Now sadly she was sent to jail for piracy, and although she avoided a hanging due to expecting a child, her child was taken away from her. 
Atabai rescued her and Anne, but for Mary it was too late. She was too ill to carry on. But before she passed away, she asked Edward to do right by her. What a sad and poignant moment that was. But it was a beautiful send-off to an amazing character. Don't die on my account. Go. This is such a pain in the ass. Damn it. You should have been the one to outlast me. I've done my part. Will you? If you came with me, I could. Mary. I'll be with you, can we? Okay, so my second favourite female in the Assassin's Creed series is Cassandra, the Spartan Eagle Bearer and as badass as it gets. Now of course Odyssey was all about choice so other people may have had different experiences with Cassandra, but I felt like Cassandra's voice actor Melissa Anfamahud really brought her to life and was the highlight of Odyssey. She felt like the natural protagonist to play as, just like Alexios suited the role of Demos better. The moments of kindness from Cassandra as she travelled the world of ancient Greece felt so meaningful playing as Earth. You could tell she cared, and the moment when she met Marini, her mother for the first time since the child, was incredibly moving. I also admire how she never gave up on Alexios because family was so important to her. And thankfully I got the happier ending in my playthrough with Cassandra. She was a real warrior, but a very caring woman at the same time. Unless you're a Malacca. Right, on to my favourite female character in Assassin's Creed now, and it may surprise some people, it is Anne Bonny, the Irish barmaid turned quartermaster of the Jackdaw. She had a real good sense of humour with her charming Irish accent. But at first, Anne seemed like a minor side character in Black Flag, someone who bounced wit off drunken pirates in the Nassau Tavern. But over the course of the game, she became more and more important. A fair way into the story, she fell for the charms of Jack Rackham and became good friends with Mary Reed. These relationships encouraged her to begin piracy, learning how to wield a sword and a pistol. However, the pirate's life caught up with her as she was sent to jail, but she too avoided a hanging due to being pregnant. After Altabai and Edward rescued her, she sadly lost a child after birth. It was a terribly emotional and distressing time for her. But Edward stood by her side and she became his quartermaster. With the help of Edward, she really came into her own and was the ideal replacement for Aduwali. Come the end of the game, Anne was still affected by the events but showed immense support for Edward, assuring him that he's a good man and will prove to be a good father too. And that's what I really love about her. Even after all she's been through, she's assured Edward that he can do right, just like Mary told him. This of course led to a very special moment and my favourite moment in the whole series where she sung the parting glass in her beautiful voice while Edward saw his old friends and then his daughter for the first time. This still gives me the feels and Anne Bonny sung it perfectly. I won't lie, this moment put Anne head and shoulders above anyone else for me. I mean, just watch this, she fully deserves my number one spot. Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. 
England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irishman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. Well, my mind is saddled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! <laughs> You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father too. Well, that was a ton of fun explaining my top five female characters in Assassin's Creed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing, and see you soon.